G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. Now if you love that, and you love my voice, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, hit the subscribe button, and enjoy today's episode. Let's go. Posted by user throwaway61011, titled, I, 33 female, read my husband's 37 male, journal, and in it, he says that he hates me and hopes I die. My husband has kept a semi-regular journal throughout our four-year relationship. He does not keep it hidden, and up until now, I have always respected his privacy. We had a heated conversation, and my gut told me to read it, so after he left for work, I did. He wrote several times that he hates me, and at one point, he said when I was sick, he hoped I would die. When I read those words, I packed up me and our baby and went to a friend's where I'm staying now. I took pictures of all the pages. I told him I just need some space to cool off after our conversation and that I will be home soon. I booked with my therapist and contacted a lawyer. We had a rough patch recently that lasted about two weeks. It was a dark time, but we pulled through. There was no violence, no moments where I was afraid of him, just sincere conversations about difficult feelings. The notes of hatred correspond with that rough patch. The rest of the journal is tame and reflects the man that I know and love. Mostly little pep talks around work and family stuff, goals, habit tracking. He has sent me several warm messages since I left. He says he's glad I'm taking space for myself and that he looks forward to reconnecting when I come home. It's okay to have little hiccups, that he loves me, etc. I was sure that our relationship was over the moment I read that he hates me, or even the moment that I felt the need to violate his privacy, but the warm messages and the rest of the journal have me wavering a little. I understand the need to blow off steam when things are tense, and journaling is a healthy way to do that, but never even in our darkest moments have I fantasized about his death. Splitting up maybe, but this feels so sinister. I don't know how I could ever feel safe around him again. Is this just healthy venting, or am I overreacting here? Has anyone else had similar thoughts about a spouse that they then got over? Or is this a man that I need to protect myself and my baby from? Edit to add context, the rough patch was about his feelings for another woman. He didn't cheat, but his friendship with her makes me uncomfortable. The part of the journal where he says he hates me was written as a love letter to her. He says he thinks about me dying and being replaced. In the comments, Jealous Ad says... I'm married 17 years, and I've never wished my spouse would die. Like what? Does he know that you've seen this? He just left it out like he wanted you to see it, and you are the mother of his child. OP says, he doesn't know I've seen it, he always has left it out. It is over. He wrote a love letter in his journal to another woman? You know that it's more than a friendship, no matter what he says to your face. Stay strong, contact an attorney, go to your home while he is at work, and gather more of your belongings. I am sorry, don't believe his words now. He is seeing a strong woman stand up for herself, and reality is hitting him in the face. Email those pictures to at least one person you trust before he finds out you've seen them. He wishes you dead? And no, you are not overreacting. That is how he feels about you. All the other is an act. Girl, check if he's taken a life insurance out in your name with him as beneficiary. Especially because they're fighting over the fact that he has feelings for another woman. Not a good combination of factors. And do not be alone with him again. If he wants to meet to talk, you can do it out in public somewhere. If you need to go get your things, have someone go with you when he's at work, just in case he shows up for some reason. Or even see if you can get a police escort. I know people deal with heavy feelings in their journals and can write some crazy stuff, but this just seems out of bounds. Yeah, he might be venting, but even if he is, it would be pretty disturbing to find out your spouse thought about you like that, especially in relation to him being interested in another woman. And unfortunately, the stakes are too high if he isn't just venting. It is. My heaviest feelings are either grief about a loved one who passed, watching someone I want around my age, like my 15-year-old cat starting to get cloudy eyes, and hatred of myself. No one I love. Not ever. Not even a little. The angriest I write about them is that I am mad about a behavior or action. I haven't ever written about an animal. 
the humans around me? Unthinkable. Not even humans I dislike or have had serious conflicts with. I don't want to be around them, but they should get to be around at all, like Jesus effing Christ. Yeah, I agree with that one too. I feel like it's too dangerous of a territory for OP to be messing around with and giving this guy the benefit of the doubt, because a love letter to do with emotional intimacy or emotional cheating with someone else, which includes, I want to kill my wife? What in the true crime podcast is going on here? Like, that seems like you are going to be murdered, OP. He is a psycho. I would love to know the full story of how he arrived at this point, with the fact that he can journal about hating you and hoping you die, and then leaving it out in public for you to go discover, because it's not like he was hiding it. He is not hiding this. What has he been watching? Who has he been talking to? What has led to him doing this? That is sick. And now, on to the update. I hope I'm doing this right. Thank you so much for all the advice and words of encouragement. Some of it was tough to read, but still deeply appreciated. I wanted to do an update because a lot of people were concerned for my safety. I took a comment as advice and sent the pictures to a trusted friend. She pointed out that a passage I initially read as every day I think about telling her actually very clearly says killing her. I guess my brain couldn't comprehend that at first. I received a ton of helpful perspective and support, but that comment in particular might have saved my life. After I digested that, I called a crisis line and they were quite helpful in talking me through the shock. They also put me in touch with a center that is helping me get more affordable legal help. I bought some more time for my husband. I told him that I'm enjoying getting out of town and I'd like to stay an extra night or two. I have therapy tomorrow and an appointment with a social worker to make a safety plan. I feel like I have a good crew of family, friends, and professionals supporting me. Absolutely zero regrets now about reading his journal. My gut told me something was off, but I couldn't have imagined a worst case scenario as bad as this. I'm so glad the inner alarm bells were louder than my conscience this time. Nothing about this marriage is worth risking my life to salvage. In the comments, I think me and this entire subreddit are applauding you right now and are so relieved that you are taking these actions and protecting yourself. No marriage is worth being another statistic for. When I saw your post, I was horrified for you and I am personally so glad you got the hell out of there ASAP. Sincerely, I hope it is onwards and upwards for you from now on OP. Yeah, I've been thinking about her since I read the first post. I told my husband about it. I am so glad she's going to be okay. OP, we are so proud of you. He will temporarily be even more dangerous once he realizes you are leaving, and especially once he realizes it will cost him a lot of money. Child support, divorce attorney. No matter how sweet he acts, please don't be alone with him at all. Be very aware of your surroundings. The book, Why Did He Do That?, by Lundy Buncroft, is amazing in these situations. You can probably find a free PDF online. That book saved my life and my sanity when I was afraid my ex-husband was going to kill me. And now, onto the final update. I just want to say a huge thank you to this community for helping me through a challenging time. Your comments and messages have been such a comfort, and I'm so touched by the kindness of internet strangers. At the suggestion of the social worker, I reported his journal to the local police, and that was, unsurprisingly, a 1 out of 10 experience. The officer I spoke to chided me for reading his journal, spoke about his reasonable expectation of privacy, and basically threatened to tell my husband that I had reported him. I had to firmly advocate for myself and stress that I was afraid for my life. It was an awful conversation, but now there is at least a record which includes photos of the journal. The family lawyer that I spoke with advised me to file a protection order right away. The order would ban him from all contact with me and our child, bar him from our residence, my workplace, and any other places that I request. He would then have to prove to a judge that he is a fit parent to be able to see his daughter again, and then we would go to mediation to try and agree on what visitation would look like. Another wrench in this situation is that we own a business together. I have an appointment with another lawyer this week to discuss what my options are there. The business was my idea. 
I'm confident I can run it without him, and I want to, but he's put a lot of time into it, and it's the main source of income for both of us right now. It's a good moneymaker, and I'm worried he'd fight me tooth and nail on this. We take turns going in, so I went as usual on Saturday, with a friend and a baseball bat. I continued my act of intending to reconcile, doing video calls with the baby, etc. While I was at our workplace, I found another journal. Page after page, love letters to this other woman going back months. The progression from, I liked seeing you at the grocery store, to, I drove past your house today, was wild. He writes about how deeply in love he is with her, can't wait to marry her, etc. He wrote about every interaction he has ever had with her, and the poor woman seems completely innocent and oblivious. Even what he perceived as flirting seems like basic politeness. He mentions a few other times that he wants me to die. The most recent entry was from the day before. He writes to her that he thinks that I might be breaking up with him, but that's fine because he never liked me that much anyway. If he's upset about anything, it's just about losing the house and how the breakup will be perceived by our friends and community. I'm curious if people think I should warn the other woman. It's my instinct not to, at least not before the ink dries in our impending paperwork. I was already concerned about how he might react to being served with a protection order, most worried that he might try to sabotage our business or trash the house. Given how preoccupied he seems to be with his public image, I made a plan to confront him about the journals and use the protection order as leverage. Here's how it went down. I left the journal and my baby with my friend and went to our house with two trusted male friends and the baseball bat. They waited on our porch. I told my husband that if they heard anything louder than a speaking voice, they would come in with the bat. I told him I had to tell him something that he wouldn't like to hear, and he needed to know that I had already taken steps to protect myself. I told him I read the journals, specifically what he said about wanting me to die, and thinking every day about killing me. I said I had taken photos, that they are backed up, and a trusted source also has copies, that I also have the original copy of the journal full of love letters. I wondered until this moment if he had intended for me to find them, but he was obviously blindsided. He tried to say that it was just venting, but I told him that I would not be taking any chances or entertaining anything he has to say about it, that after reading what I read, I will never trust him or feel safe around him ever again. I told him that no one that knows him knows about this yet. The men on the porch just know that I'm breaking up with him and need support. This was true, aside from the friend that I called to stay with, and the other friend that I sent the photos to, who lives on the other side of the country. I said I'm willing to protect his reputation here if he cooperates with me. I told him that I don't even have to ruin his chances with the other woman, but I can. I said that he can either do what I need to feel safe, or I can have that safety court-ordered. He asked what I wanted, and I said that I wanted him to give up the business. We'll sort out the details after I speak to the other lawyer, but for now, I want his keys, and I'll be changing the passwords on everything. He didn't put up any kind of fight. He didn't want to hear anything about what it would look like to go through the courts. He didn't ask about our baby. He just calmly got up and got the keys, and asked if I wanted anything else. I told him that any communication with me should be about separation logistics only, like arranging a time for me to collect the rest of my things. Since then, he has been blowing up my phone, saying I know his heart, let's walk back from the edge, let's talk to a therapist, he's sorry his words hurt me, etc. Each time, I just tell him he's crossing my boundaries, and he backs off. He apparently told his mum and sister everything, and they're supporting him in getting help. He's been cooperative so far. He's interviewing for a new job, seeing a therapist, and updating me on his movements though I didn't ask for this. I've temporarily moved in with my parents. My commute to work is longer, but I have help with baby and home-cooked dinners, starting to settle into new routines, doing so much therapy and yoga. I inherited a small cabin before my husband and I met. It is currently being renovated, and the original plan was to move in there with my husband and baby when it's done. The cabin is actually in my mother's name because she's never trusted my husband. Correct and wanted me to shield it from him in case of a divorce. Thank you, Mom. So I will have a permanent home for me and my baby very soon. 
The dust still needs to settle, and it could get worse before it gets better, but I'm optimistic at this point. I'm confident that I'm going to come out the other side of this as a badass single mum with an incredible child, a thriving business, and an adorable little home. Honestly, the thought of having all those things on my own without my husband is so freeing. I've got a great village supporting me. Thank you all so much for being a part of it. In the comments, Darth Baker says, I am so thankful to read this. I've been thinking about you the last two days. So happy that you advocated for yourself, took the correct measures, and didn't accept anything less than what you deserve in this life. The road ahead isn't ever as long as we think it is, and it's good that you left and are able to heal and move forward. OP says, Thanks for keeping me in your thoughts. He doesn't care about his child? OP says, This is what's most shocking to me. He was always such an attentive father, but he's not fighting for her at all. Yeah, no, says, He's already not putting up a fight, and that itself is a huge relief. If you still let the lady know, it could make him snap and hurt her and the baby. OP has to think about her kid's safety and try not to be a target. And OP says, This is exactly where my head is at. I don't know this woman, so I can't trust her not to tell her friends, and I don't want it to get back to him. Still Likes Turtles says, OP's lawyer or social worker should handle that. OP should share it with both. Either can take appropriate action to inform the other woman. No need for OP's life to be messier or give the soon-to-be ex anything to work with. And OP says, Lawyer agreed with me that it's best not to talk to the other woman for now. The police know. It would make a wonderful book someday. Maybe you can turn this horrible event into a stream of income for you and your baby somehow to help with your new life. It takes a week just to make the appointment sometimes. Lawyers, therapists, but protection orders can come quickly. Please tell us this is real, that you didn't lie to us. And OP says, It is all unfortunately real. For anyone else in a similar situation that might be reading this, in my area, there is a legal center that holds space for emergency appointments every day at 2pm. Protection orders are processed the same day that they are filed. That's my understanding, I didn't actually file one yet. As far as a therapist, I have one that I see regularly, so I already had an appointment on the books. After speaking with me, my therapist opened up an additional weekend appointment because I obviously needed the extra support. I'd love to know exactly why Opie's mother didn't trust the husband. What did she see in him? My mom once told me, regarding my now ex-husband but then fiancé, that fiancé seems like the kind of guy that would just up and murder his family one night and everyone would say, holy shit, we never saw that coming. It was just a specific and jarring comment. My ex-husband honestly seemed so sweet and innocent. When things started going to shit, he started stalking me, physically intimidating me, cornering me, and towering over me, told me he'll ensure that I am destitute when this is all done. He literally flipped to a different guy, and I think my mum saw something that I didn't. This is how I felt about a stalker that I had. We were talking about abortion when we were seeing each other because he saw a comment of mine on Facebook and started disagreeing very hard on the subject. I don't remember the exact words he used, but he basically told me that he wouldn't allow me to abort his baby if I were to get pregnant. That really freaked me out. Tried to reason with him face to face, hoping that I was misunderstanding him. But nope. So after that talk, I tried to slowly back away from him, since he knew that I didn't want a relationship, but since he became more and more annoying by being devil's advocate, I unfriended him. And then the harassing and threatening started. For two years, this man called me and messaged me, only to find out that he was doing it at the same time to other women. One of them even managed to file a complaint against him, and now he cannot come close to her and also got a record for harassment. Always, always trust your gut. I had a boyfriend sleep over when I lived at my mom's, and she didn't sleep all night. He was in my bed, I was on the couch, and she was strict about sharing. It was her first time meeting him. I commented that I couldn't understand why she had an issue when she'd never had an issue sleeping when I'd had other boyfriends sleep over on the couch. 
It turned out that he was emotionally abusive, and she sensed that something wasn't right about him at first meeting. Sometimes people outside the relationship pick up a feeling, a vibe, an off comment that those who are in the relationship can't see until later on. Quote, The officer that I spoke to chided me for reading his journal, spoke about his reasonable expectation of privacy, and basically threatened to tell my husband I had reported him. I am utterly not surprised by this reaction. There are multiple cases of women being killed because police will not believe them, dismiss their concerns, and in a few horrific cases, give their new contact details to their abusive ex, after which he shows up and murders her. 28% of police officers commit domestic violence by self-report. The famous 40% stat includes spouses of officers as well. As it is self-report, the number is likely much higher. Yup, it's horrific, and they get away with it all the time, as well as enabling other domestic abusers. It is literally ingrained culture for them. Yeah, it's very much ingrained culture here in Australia too. The domestic violence, assault, and the spousal murder rate is insane here in Australia. I've lived experience here that we cannot trust the cops because... So many times, women are just murdered and the same thing happens, where the police don't care that protection orders are violated. They will be called over and over and over by these people, saying, he's at my house, he's trying to kill me, he is going to kill me, and the police are like, you're just being dramatic. And then they end up murdered. It is a sick and twisted world we live in, and I, I, I hope it changes one day, but I don't know how. Our next post is by user ImmediateWay2944, titled, Am I the asshole for going fishing the day my ex was giving birth? I, male 29, ended a relationship with this woman, Maria, female 27, about one and a half years ago. Our relationship was largely casual, and I made it abundantly clear to Maria that I didn't want a serious long-term relationship. Maria agreed, since we had such wildly different values and beliefs, but after being together for about 11 months, she confessed that she wanted a serious relationship with the prospect of getting married. I declined, as I thought, and still think, that we are way too different to start something like that. We continued our relationship for a few more months when Maria brought up marriage and starting a family again. She started saying things like how her family and friends liked me as well and how we'd be a great fit. I decided to break things off with Maria, I felt like we both wanted different things, and it was better if we went our separate ways. Maria was devastated by our breakup and begged me to remain in contact, so I did. We kept a decently close friendship for the past one and a half years. Since then, Maria's life has been through a downward spiral. She hasn't gotten into any serious relationships. She's been in many, but they've only lasted two months at most, and most of the guys were not very good. This lifestyle has caused a lot of friction with her parents, and she tells me she no longer speaks with them because of it. Maria also failed out of a graduate school and has struggled to find work before finally learning a job that she hates a few months ago. One of the guys Maria was with got her pregnant at some point, and she was scheduled to give birth at some point last week. Leading up to the birth, Maria started calling me a lot, and she seemed very apprehensive. She told me that she was terrified of becoming a mum, I tried to reassure her that she'd make a great mum, visited her several times in the past few months, and helped her out whenever I could. Maria ended up giving birth last week, on the day that I was going fishing with some of my old friends that I hadn't seen in a while. When I found out about the birth the following day, from one of Maria's friends, I called her and congratulated her. Maria sounded exhausted, but was happy that I called. Later that week, I started getting a lot of messages from Maria's friends telling me how I should have been there since Maria was so afraid, as none of her family showed up and she was hoping that I would come. One of her friends, Katie, female 28, was particularly angry. She said that I needed to be more supportive of Maria since she felt alone and I was abusing the trust that Maria had in me. Honestly, I get helping out and being there for friends, but I feel like it wasn't exactly my responsibility. Also, she had two of her other friends, Katie and another girl, with her on the day of the birth, so I don't know what I could have added. Am I the asshole? For more context, 
For those wondering, the father is back in Austria, and there's like a 60% chance that he doesn't even know about the kid. All of Maria's friends know that he's the dad, but they just refer to him as some asshole. While I do want to maintain a cordial relationship with Maria, I have no interest in raising her child. Even more context, for those wondering, I knew the baby was supposed to be born last week. He was scheduled for Saturday, but the little guy decided that he wanted to come earlier, so was born on Wednesday. I left town Tuesday night and planned on coming back on Friday. The baby was born on Wednesday, and I only found out on Thursday. I called Maria afterwards and congratulated her. I didn't make any promises about being there for the kid's birth. In the comments, Joss Carith says, Not the asshole. Guarantee that she had this fantasy where you bonded with the kid and came back to her. It's time to walk away. 100%. OP needed to nix this relationship long ago. If she hasn't already, she's developing some unhealthy attachment, and OP is only enabling the delusion. Agree. Personal opinion. When it's apparent the other person isn't able to let go, and you've definitely let go, you have an obligation to cut it off completely for their sake. You may not be stringing them along, but they're stringing themselves along. I definitely think the friends are encouraging this. Everybody is expecting OP to step up here. Who expects a man who is not related to be in delivery? She's going to want support with so much. When will it end? When he marries her and adopts the kid. To Maria's friends, they want to see Maria be the magnet that pulls OP back for the sake of their dopamine levels. Dude, she's looking for a daddy. I would back away from the friendship, not the asshole. I was about to type this. Next, she'll be asking you to do fatherly things with her kid because the kid has no father figure and pressuring you to get together. I would cut the friendship now, not the asshole. Not your baby, not your business. Poor Maria, but this is not your problem. Block her overbearing friends. Meh. Maria made choices here that affected her relationships with the flings and her family and keeping a baby by herself, or having unprotected sex with strange men in the first place. I don't think there's any poor Maria here. Yeah, I'm kind of on board with all of those guys there. Maria kind of did this to herself and that's a choice that she made, but you made it very obvious from the start that you weren't looking for a relationship with her, and I respect that you stood your ground and held those boundaries strong. Having such conflicting views is absolutely a deal breaker, and why would you want to start a relationship with someone like that if you can't even find common ground? It's not your fault that Maria's life has spiraled out of control and has come to this point, and it's not your fault for missing the birth because you never made any promises. I think she's the one being weird and delusional here, and yeah, walk away, not the asshole. And now, on to the update. Before I proceed with my update, I'd like to clarify a few points that have been raised. Many people have been wondering about my statement regarding Maria's values and beliefs not aligning with mine. By this, I meant that Maria and I differ on various topics such as religion, finances, and culture. While I do respect Maria and enjoy my time with her, for a long-time relationship involving marriage and children, I'd prefer someone who shares more similarities to me. My own family has also felt that Maria and I weren't a good match in the long run, though they did acknowledge her as a nice girl. Firstly, Maria and I have very different opinions on religion. I don't want to get too bogged down in the details, but I feel like this was a major obstacle to us forming a lasting relationship, especially considering how we both wanted children eventually. Second, we both come from different places financially. Maria is in a significant amount of debt, both student loans and credit card debt. And while I don't judge being in debt, I do think Maria could be more careful with her finances. I admit that I have more of a privileged perspective than her, so I might not fully understand her financial struggles. Nonetheless, during our time together, I felt that she would typically spend more than she should. And lastly, Maria and I have different cultural backgrounds. Though we are both American, we come from different walks of life, which is a point of contention for my family, especially my older sister, female 36, and sometimes for even myself during certain points in our relationship. I'd also like to acknowledge that I'm fairly certain Maria still has feelings for me, 
Whenever we talk privately, she loves to reminisce about our time together and usually refers to it as the happiest time of her life. Not to mention, if I mention to her a date that I've been on, I can tell that it hurts her, but she tries to hide it. Moving on to the update. I spoke with my older brother Brad, male 32, over the phone since posting, and he said that he thinks that it's time Maria and I completely part ways. Our differences were already big, and now with her having a child, it's completely unrealistic for anything to ever work out between us. Brad believes that by maintaining contact, I'm only giving Maria false hope of us getting back together. He also thinks that given how Maria's friends reacted to my absence, it's clear they are all hoping that we get back together. I hoped I'd be able to remain friends with Maria, but after hearing my brother and doing some self-reflection, I realized that I couldn't do so in good faith. I don't plan on suddenly cutting contact since Maria just had a baby and all, but I will be winding down contact in the coming weeks and months. However, for the next month or so, I will mostly act like I normally do since it is a very difficult time for her and her social circle is already small. On Monday evening, I got a call from Maria. We chatted for a bit and she mentioned how she'd like me and some of our friends to come and meet the baby in a few weeks when he gets bigger and stronger. I did agree to this and we'll all be getting together at her place in about a month to see the little guy. She also shared some photos of him with me and again mentioned her nervousness about raising him alone. When I asked about the father, she admitted she hadn't spoken to him in a while, which is frustrating. Aside from this, there isn't much else to report. I wish Maria all the best and hope she finds her way through parenthood. In the comments, LittleBitFunny21 says, Please just cut contact. Quote, I did agree to this, and we'll all be getting together at her place in about a month to see the little guy. This is not cutting contact. This is laying the groundwork for her to use as leverage to say that the baby loves you and misses you and needs to have you in his life. Just block her and be done with it. My brother told me to do the sensible thing and cut contact, which I will do. Just let me become even slightly more involved with her kid than I currently am and go spend time with her and her friends who want me to get back with her in person first. That absolutely can't go wrong. So it was a huge mistake to go and I wish someone had told me not to. I was ambushed by her friends who demanded that I get back with her and just to placate them, I agreed. I wish someone could have warned me. OP in their next update. For crying out meow says, Are you perchance flat and rectangular with welcome written across your face? Because you're acting like her doormat. Block her and move on with your life. Dude is looking for the right moment to give the bad news goodbye and it will never come. He's just going to have to take the hit and be the villain. She's managed to alienate her family in her last breakup spiral that lasted several years, and there is no telling what will happen when he tells her for a third and final time that he is not her dream guy. Poor kid. Hopefully she pulls herself together enough to be a decent parent. The right moment was when he first broke up with her, which he probably should have done the first time she discussed getting serious instead of stringing her along. I don't understand this guy at all. He made it abundantly clear that he has zero desire for any long-term or meaningful relationship with this girl, yet he keeps participating in her life. I get not wanting to be an asshole to someone, but in a way, you're being a bigger asshole by staying around and being at her every beck and call. I agree with his brother. He is without question giving Maria false hope that he may come back around one day. He needs to go no contact yesterday. He likes that she's still into him. That's the impression that I get too. I can't prove that though, so I just didn't want to mention it. But yeah, it seems to me like even though he doesn't want anything long term with her, he has no issue keeping her on the back burner in case he ever needs it. Again, I can't prove that though and could be wrong, so I hesitated to say it lol. Nah, you're absolutely right. OP wants to have a string attached to her for his own personal gratification. I read, kept decently close for the past one and a half years, as him and her still having sex while she was trying to see other people. Who knows? The friends are upset for a reason. It seems OP may be omitting some facts to save face in the post. 
And that's where I'm going to end today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.